Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, October 23rd, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. <laughs> Welcome to Cubs Off on the Bear Podcast. I've been determined late. Episode number 668. And uh, it is another let's talk about this time we're talking about. Just eat it. Food. One of our favorite episodes, I'm sh- sure, and most likely everybody's. Get, uh, get, d- Gary, what are we talking about today? Well, we might actually be talking about not eating it. Huh? I don't know. We'll see how I don't that know goes. About that. I, I, might, I might disagree with you on this. <laughs> David agrees. <laughs> Hashtag fact. So uh, today is online trends and quote unquote hacks. Now, the reason why hacks is in quotes is because I think there's a lot of stuff out there now that just kind of makes you pause and pay attention and then elicit a response. So social media in recent years has seen a growing trend of uh, clickbait videos listing quote unquote hacks and previously unknown trends when it comes to the food that we eat. So we're going to check out some recent postings and see if there's any merit to improving our eating potential. Caveat, Mm. we have no TikToks here. None. Nada. All right. Zilch. Since you decided to bring it up as a controversy, I am an old man. I am not on TikTok. I don't care for TikTok. It is of no interest to me. And specifically, part of the issue I have with TikTok is that it is a constant feed and it tries to make you watch things. And I'm like, no, baby. Like, this is part of why I stepped away from Facebook for the most part. This is why, like, like. I am a control freak, and as I get older, I'm getting more freakish about that control. It's like, I want what I want. Don't try to force feed me things. That's yeah, that's basically that. it. I mean, Damon, do you watch TikTok at all? I don't have TikTok. Exactly. So all three of us are in the same boat here. <laughs> so I'm, I'm We're not all saying I don't over 40. watch the occasional TikTok videos, but I right. do will say. Links or something like that, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, if someone links a, a TikTok video, I will look at it if I can. You know, sometimes you can't look at stuff because you don't have TikTok. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm not looking at this is my usual response if I can't see it right. in the moment. Um, in other, wor- in but, other words, we're all old men can uh, curmudgeon. So I apologize. I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware they're coming to this thinking, thinking, oh, we got TikToks. They're going to be talking about TikToks. No, we're not talking about TikToks because we don't have TikTok. So there's a reference to TikTok, but that's about it. So, right. 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 That's TikToks and the wet snots and the ship shops and the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we need this tickety talk sis, whatever? There's no anyways, talks in here. Well, you know. Th- so this anyways. is going a long time for me just making the disclaimer that there won't be any data. Right. But but there is an illusion or reference to and to be fair, some things, um, you know, it's all kind of the same, like manufactured, processed like Mm -hmm. things. Once in a while, something comes about that is actually not new nor revolutionary, but really kind of takes the world by storm. Hence my backdrop. If you happen to remember hearing about the feta cheese pasta bake thing that like kind of like took the social media world by storm. 
because it was putting pasta with sun-dried tomato, like cherry tomatoes, and a block of feta cheese in a casserole dish. You throw it in an oven. Voila, you have a, a pasta dish. Um, which is comical to me because being a person of my age and having seen and been around food my entire life, as we all have, it it kind of amuses me where people are like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And I'm like, it's not that revolutionary. Like, if you understand food and how it gets made, it's fair. It's not that big a deal. So, I mean, way it's back kind when, of cool. Way back when, back in the 50s, maybe even earlier, there were these periodicals that came out and there was these commercials on something called the radio it was kind of like podcasts except they <laughs> uh, sent it over the air and you had it was like live tv before the ott streaming uh, process but without the video it was radio they would have people talking about it and it was sponsored quite frequently by a company known as campbell's which makes condensed soups and you know what most uh uh, of their recipes included cream of mushroom soup that was basically the binder of a casserole right the, the casserole was like america's answer to uh random items blended together and don't, i don't mean a blender like mixed together poured in a dish topped shoved in baked pulled out and it's one of the greatest inventions of all time and I'm I I kind of agree with you, Jeff. Like that that's one of the things that I'm privy to. It's it's something that I have a preference for personally. But that's because of how I was raised. Yeah. And you so. can make casseroles without having to deal with like like Campbell's cream of mushrooms, condensed cream of mushroom soup or something like that. You can make right. actual look good, authentic, healthy. I'm gonna put that in quotes. <clears throat> um where you like make your gravy or something like that. And, and such but it, it it gave people a a platform right but we're not talking about any of that today i'm just saying what we're going to be talking about here is basically modern thing modern things of things that people did way back when kind of i mean there are there are some newer things so like for example mm -hmm. the first video um is called some breakfast for you and mm -hmm. so it's about three minutes long and it goes through these like things that are like a whole series of different items and so like yeah. one of the first ones is the classic pepper ring like you slice a, a sweet pepper uh across and then you end up with a, a whole intact ring you put it in a pan and you mm -hmm. crack an egg into it now what they don't show is the myriad of videos of people attempting this and it failing because the egg whites run out underneath the ring mm -hmm. into the rest of the pan so the egg doesn't stay in the ring yeah. like that's that's one of the issues about some of these things is they put that you know people post these videos and of course that might have been like the the 78th try where it actually right. worked but people right. don't know that. Yeah, like I, like this one was okay, but I think my main issue with this is there's a lot of skill in some of these that are very quickly right. glossed over, very quickly glossed over. Like the just the second one, as I was looking at it, the, oop, nope, I don't want to hear that sound. Um, the like they pour the, the the I'm assuming egg mixture and then they like use chopsticks and kind of twirl it. Like um, right. I know it seems simple, but it's not that simple to like do. Um, and right. then there's it, like the folded yeah. Like it definitely the... takes skill, mm -hmm. some some hand artistry, some cook know how, right. like. Plus, I'm paying attention to, like, the utensils that they're using, the surfaces, like, uh -huh. like not many people have a cast iron, like, non-stick, like, crepe pan, which is kind of what some of these things are utilizing. Right. So it's a lot of surface area for the food. Like, yeah. So your, your point is well taken, David, like, you know, about the – how they – they're showing some different ways. But I do think it's kind of – Need And that was part of the reason I wanted to discuss this for this episode is like, I think some of these show us new, not necessarily new inventive, but like different ways that we may not have seen mm -hmm. something being prepared for before. Right. Yeah. There are some like there, I, I will say 
it's kind of cool watching this. It's mostly egg. So if you're watching this, it's a lot of like egg, egg different in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I will also say that there are like there there's a couple couple of them where it skips like steps, you know, like for <laughs> a example, lot of steps. Yeah, like for example, the one that is the egg yolk and the egg white one that kind of like stripe it. I'm like, okay, that's cool, but did you have to separate them, the eggs and the egg yolks? Did you have to take the time to do all of that shit? Yes. Did you? I mean, you can technically buy. I think you can buy egg whites and egg yolks like already pre- separated, pre- separated, pre- yeah. separated, but they don't show that. So I assume that they're they're apparently doing this naturally, or well, naturally being with like an egg, like with actual eggs. Well, there's also some other things like the one with the egg yolk in the breadcrumbs mm-hmm. that gets deep fried. I'm like, who has orange breadcrumbs? I also, I want wonder is like who has oil that looks that clear. It well, makes me I'm think fresh. they didn't. It, it wasn't fried, but uh, poached. Mm. Like that was hot water, not what. Otherwise, oh. I don't know how the oil was so crystal clear, transparent. The only mm. thing I could think of is that it was brand new because of the visual optics. Like they're trying to make it look so professional. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, which yeah. would be problematic because your point is well taken, Jeff. It's like if it doesn't take on the first time, then you're going to start all over again because then the vo- the oil is going to end up being cloudy. You, well, I also mean that even even if they're using a fresh batch of oil each time they're trying to do a take, I don't – It all oils that I've seen, they even like on cooking shows and everything, there's been some sort of like slight color tint to it. But this was like crystal. There was like no color at all. It was completely colorless, which makes well, me think it's water versus versus oil. But it really looks like it was actually fried, which then makes me all confused. Um, I have a theory. It it might not have been vegetable oil. It might have been animal fat. Maybe like mm. lard, yeah, or um, fat back or something because. Those fats yeah, tend yeah, to be white, and then when heated, they are more clear as opposed to like an oil, yeah, yeah, yellowish or, or whatever. Um, but no, I mean, your point is well taken where it's like you know, it just looks really a certain way, yeah. It's um, but you know, they're also showing orange, angles. I mean, like, yeah. And, like and sun kiss color orange, and that could just be because I'm 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 assuming, and and this is just me being assuming things that this is probably a lot of these don't appear to be United States based, right? Like I have a feeling this is Asia, China, Japan, whatever, what mm-hmm. kind of that area. Um, and I've because I've seen yolks from that those areas, and their chicken their chicken yolks are usually that kind of bright orange. Which, uh, I mean, to, so for our international <laughs> listeners and viewers, you can get egg yolks that are high in, um, I think it's keratin, which is what makes it really orange. You can buy them in the store that way. They cost a lot more. Or mm-hmm. you could get them from someone who has chickens that they raise on their own mm-hmm. with, you know, feed and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I've had them in the past. They, yeah. they do taste different you know not drastically and they do have a different color and that kind of stuff to them but yes if you buy a conventional egg especially the cheapest eggs in the supermarket they're going to be pale yellow as a yolk Mm -hmm. yeah like as i was talking about like one of the other ones there's one like i was talking about like steps being missed Mm -hmm. like there's this one where they they separate the eggs and you show them separating the eggs and then they do they add like soy sauce and spices to the egg yolks and then all of a sudden there's this bowl of white something which I'm assuming, this is me assuming, is that they had beat, um, they had, um, oh, beat the egg yolk, or egg whites, to kind of get the the fluffy um, texture. To right. They get a meringue, I think that is? Yeah, wow. yeah. I was trying to figure out, thank you, Jeff, the meringueing. I don't know if that's the actual thing that you're doing, but, and it's like, oh, well, 
Right, right because that. because when they go to pour the eggs with the seasoning into the egg whites that are already beaten to a soft peak, you don't see anything that happens with the egg whites. So I'm like, is that milk? Like, what are they pouring that into? Right. I almost thought it was rice to begin with. Yeah. I, I When I caught this the first time, so for F- FYI, we watch these. And if you are a patron and um, we're watching a pre-show, <laughs> um that, that's a uh, that's a later video. We'll, we'll get to yeah. that. Yeah, but uh, I, I when I, when we watched this the, when I watched this the first time, I was like, oh okay. I had to figure out what it was because it's uh, for a second I was like, that's okay. That has to be the egg whites because I've you know I watch I watch cooking shows, <laughs> um, and <laughs> it made sense that that would be the the whipped egg whites uh, or you know beat beat no whisked maybe whatever. To get those that, that like fluffy texture, right? Like, and one of the things that I found interesting was that later in the video they pour. Uh, I want to say scrambled, but it's just it's the liquid eggs mixed up. They pour mm-hmm. it over like a, a handheld. Um, it's typically called like a spider, full of cut peppers, uh huh, to make spicy Chilies. scrambled eggs. What's that? Chilies, yeah. So they're they're yeah they're they're hot hot quote unquote um, chili peppers. So what's wild about it is they pour it over top of the peppers, and the egg like mixture runs over top of them down into the pan, makes this big fluffy mess, and like they you know mix it up with chopsticks, and then they call it spicy scrambled eggs. Mm-hmm. Now what cracked me up is in the comments. Never read the comments, but in this case, I read the comments, and what was cracking me up is all these people bitching about that part of the video, and they're like. They're like, hello, the spices and the seeds, and like that doesn't really transfer any heat. Like those don't make them really spicy. Like they went off on this whole tangent about like them actually being spicy, which amused me to no end because I was kind of like, okay, like that's that's your yeah. takeaway. Like that's the thing that <laughs> you're really bothered by. Yeah. But I thought that was kind of interesting or novel that they were like, you could add uh like to me, it's adding a hint of a flavor to eggs as opposed to just putting them right in the eggs little things like that um you know i have to admit the lacy like kind of crepe egg batter Mm -hmm. like thing was kind of cool yeah i was like oh that's neat like i'm watching it right now and like you know they put it on a platter or plate and there's like a whole stack of them and in my head i was like okay that's kind of neat and then i'm like when would i do that Right. Would I do it for myself? Probably not, because I like I don't I don't need to prepare a dish for myself that way. And then I was like, oh, but if I had a partner and I wanted to make something nice for them, because ah. maybe I woke up and we had some brown chicken brown cow in the morning, and so <laughs> I was going to reward them with breakfast in bed or whatever, because like I'm just whistling Dixie, then this might be like a creative way to make something, mm-hmm. but. But yeah, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Obviously. And and my thing usually with this one in particular is that they they this may fall under quote unquote hacks, but they're not really hacks in this case. This is more just like different ways to prepare stuff because hacks are ways to make things easier. This was none of this it's was supposed easy. Supposed to be like none of this looked easy to me. <laughs> uh, Great, I'm not a cook, but I've watched cooking shows, so. Right. And I hate going saying that thing, but I'm like thinking about it as I was, as I was watching, and I was like, "There's nothing really here that screams to me like this is going to make this easier." Well, I will say the very last thing about the poached egg in the ladle, mm, fair, is kind of a it's not a hack, but it's a tip, like mm-hmm. which I guess is a hack, like. But what the thing I thought about is this is annoying <laughs> because <laughs> so you take a, a, a full size, like one cup ladle, I think it is from the looks of it, or maybe it's either half cup or three quarter one cup. And you crack the egg into it and you put it into boiling water from the looks of it. And, but the thing is, you have to hold the ladle with your hand mm-hmm. strategically, because if you don't, the ladle will just fall down to the bottom of the water. Right. And most people, when they poach an egg, like that's the big issue is like poaching the egg in the water. But this, you hold the ladle so that the the hot water heats the metal ladle 
and then like kind of cooks through and then you take the ladle out and you can make I think they made a sandwich. So it's like I was like, oh, that's kind of like a way to keep all the egg white contained and not make a big mess. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. one of the conventional things is you know, like you swirl the water really rapidly and then you put the egg in and it's supposed right. to like use the centrifugal blah, 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 like to try to keep the egg white together. And I'm like, mm, it doesn't really work that way. And there's a part of me that's like, bus. I'm also like, I'm sure if you went on to Amazon or some other thing, you could just buy gadgets that would just. Yeah, hold that's sort egg. of a thing as well. <laughs> um. huh. With that. The next so, one. OK, so. Food Network. This is a classic. I think all three of us were raised on the Food Network in some fashion, either in our teens or as a young adult um, later on. I, I I put this in here because I wanted to know what the two of you thought about this. Because Food Network legitimately posted this tweet. It's a, less than a half a minute long. And what they said was, it's like a cross between French toast and a gr- gooey grilled cheese in one. And I was intrigued by the concept, like by that actual way they phrased it. Mm-hmm. So it is kind of like that because you're dipping the bread into an egg mixture, mm-hmm. uh, which normally with French toast, we did have like some cinnamon and other things, basically some right. sort of custard. You're putting it into the pan to start cooking and then you put the bread on and you flip it over. Mm hmm. And so both sides, so it's soaked in the, the egg slash custard mixture. And then right. you wait until the eggs are basically done for an omelet. Flip it over. Mm-hmm. Add some cheese. Fold the egg over the cheese. Fold the sandwich and sandwich over itself. And you have, have an egg sandwich. In fact, uh, one of my buddies on one of the discords I'm part of uh, actually makes a dish very similar to this. But here's the thing, though. I don't think it's an egg custard. I think it's just eggs. Yeah, it's just egg. Yeah. In this so, thing, in it's this not saying it is egg. French right. toast. It's French toast-esque. So, like, I, I look at this one. I, I, I like it. There we go. God, I like so it. <laughs> like, um, I, I, I actually I think little, it's I had a, kind of a hack. It takes like, some practice, but. I, I like this one of the ones that well of the ones we have I think this is the one I, I could see myself potentially doing it is not a traditional French toast like it is right. not a French toast it is just egg and toast but you happen to dip it in the egg mixture um, or mixed eggs I should say yeah, because um, the, the technique maybe it's yeah is, is where the French toast comes in I mean, you probably French could toast French toast <clears throat> yeah I think you could French toast it ask it by yeah. adding adding the the appropriate flavors that you would expect for a french toast right because yeah. of this they put in shredded cheese which is where they're talking about it being like a grilled cheese concept right. like that so it's more savory than sweet but i agree right. like you could you know potentially put in like some jam or something else like you know to kind of mm-hmm. lean more in like the the sweet side mm-hmm. of things to make it like a stuffed french toast in a sense, kind yeah. of, but it's still got the egg. It's kind of a French toast egg sandwich, right? And, and I've seen this this folding, like this flipping folding technique before. Mm-hmm. So it, to me, it's like not all that revolutionary. But I think that's part of the key of why they posted it was like, here's a different way to make something or yeah. to prepare it. Um, you know, so you don't have to go through like cooking the eggs and then trying to blend in the cheese. And then mm-hmm. adding it between two slices of bread and trying to get the bread toasted right. Like, I get it. Like, yeah. in a way, it's going to save you time. Yeah. And I, I, I like it. Like, I could see myself, like, adding, like, keeping keeping it as it is. And just instead of adding just cheese, maybe adding, like, some already cooked bacon or, um, um, like, a slice of ham. You know, something along those lines to kind of give it that meat. Um, just like you can do with any grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but I'm just saying, just in right. general. Yeah, this is more grilled cheese sandwich, I suppose, than, than yeah. it is. Than but that's why I was like talking earlier about things being clickbaity because I feel like Food Network intentionally chose the wording to get people to pay attention, as opposed to here's a here's an easy way to make an egg sandwich in your pan. 
Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like they they didn't yeah. go that route. They were like, it's like a cross between a French toast and a gooey grilled cheese, which I mean, of course look, immediately look worked. At, yeah, and when you look at the the how the like the toast or the bread, like if you were doing like a regular like uh, actual like grilled cheese, that's not yeah. how the grilled cheese is going to look. Yeah, it it looks a lot more like French toast than it's looking like a regular grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. Yeah. So right. I can I can see where they're getting it. So they're and they do say it's like, not exactly. No, I know, it, but I think that's also trying to meet the American public where it is, mm-hmm. because the American public doesn't have much cooking skills anymore. Um, <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> so I think they're so I think they're intentionally funny. trying to meet the audience where they are. When you click on the actual like rest, quote unquote recipe, like there's a link to foodnetwork.com or foodtv.com. It calls it an egg and cheese bread omelet. Okay, that's a bridge too far. I'm sorry. That is not an omelet. Mama, no. Like, who puts slices of bread inside of an omelet? You don't do that. And you don't eat an omelet with as a sandwich. Like, it's an egg sandwich. What the fuck is that shit? No. <laughs> no. Again, I'm just <laughs> putting it out there. I'm not, I'm just, not chastising you, David. I'm just popping just, off. I'm just loving this. Back. Like it says cooking all of like, this is what it says. Quote, cooking all of the components of an egg sandwich, including the bread and cheese in the same skillet means you end up with a dish. That's like a cross between scrumptious French toast, French toast and a gooey grilled cheese in one inspired by a viral video of a vendor in India, making a similar dish. We created this version. That's perfect for breakfast, lunch, or dinner with a salad alongside. For the dinner part, I'm like, okay, ma'am, like that's nice. But, um, so yeah, I mean, like, like, and honestly, of all the ones that are here, this is probably the one that's the most, yeah, uh, obtainable, attainable. Correct. Like, because I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, well, I don't have any bread in my house at the moment. I don't usually. Um, I just realized that I'm like, uh, but I'm like, I have eggs, and I have cheese. Which is really all I need, and all I'm missing is the bread, and then theoretically I could like mm-hmm. screw around and try to make it. Yeah. All right. Speaking of screwing around and trying to make it, so this wow. next selection is called the quickest breakfast hack ever from BuzzFeed Food. What intrigues me about this is the amount of people trying it and the varied results. And it amuses me to no end because of all the honesty, I think this is one of the tops because it actually shows like what it's supposed to look like. And then I was highly amused by the failures that people were having trying to make it in their air fryer. Right. (laughs) Because I was like, now there's some reality for you. Like, as opposed to the perfection, I think that some of these Mm -hmm. videos try to present. Yeah. So this one is... Well, first off, you, you need an air fryer. Yeah. Like, that's the big thing. Like, mm. so, yes. like, oh, if you ain't got no air fryer, like, um, you're SOL for this one. Well, like, as as a quick poll, who of the three of us has an air fryer? One out of three. <laughs> Just goes to show. <laughs> and I, I really don't have any place to put it, so. So, okay. So, here's the tea. Yes, we got the air fryer from free for free from a friend who was um, they had basically upgraded to a different one and they Mm -hmm. were giving theirs away like and they happened to live on this side of the neighborhood of the city. So it was like, oh, sure. Just like, well, you know, come over and we'll grab it. And we did. And we've used it. One time. So here's here's the thing about how you got the air fryer. For those of you that are younger. Hey, kids, that was called a hand me down. Mm -hmm. And families did that shit and even neighbors for decades, long before we got to where we are from the 90s forward with the disposable shit, like where everything's just easily replaceable. So infamously, things would be handed down. I have a mixer in my kitchen that was given to me by my dad's ex-wife. She was given it by her mother. So, mm. like, I have this Sunbeam mixer from, like, probably the 50s or the 60s. It still works. There's nothing wrong with it. Do I pine for a brand new KitchenAid? 
Absolutely, because commercialism is a thing, and I believe in all the bullshit of the marketing that if I have one, I will bake more, and I will become this like supreme person who has like this sophisticated kitchen. It's all bullshit because <laughs> it, it ain't gonna make me better skilled, and it sure as hell isn't gonna keep my kitchen clean. But anyways, so my point yeah. of the rant is that that kind of stuff gets handed down. So I understand you're like, hey, it's free, we'll yeah. take it, we'll take it, it. maybe we'll use it, and then we did once and and again don't get me wrong i'm sure if we like really really wanted to we would find more reasons to use it but we don't you could so, try this yeah i could mm. um a slice you of bread to put, put an egg on it <laughs> put some ba- bacon put it in your air fryer with uh, at what was it 375 or three 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 fifty. I don't remember for three, seven, seven minutes. Anyway, see how it turns yeah. out. It's so it's that, eggs and toast and bacon. Yeah. So, <laughs> with that being said, um, we're going to talk about this one. Um, no, we're, we're we're not to that yet. Okay. There's one link before that, which I think you have an opinion on. Also, well, but... the quick, no, the quickest, the quickest breakfast one. I'm still talking about that one. Oh, okay. I'm talking about this one. This, this one. <laughs> You're still talking about the breakfast, like you said. Okay. Yeah, because again, gonna... my biggest, my biggest issue that I saw with this one is the mm-hmm. one that I foresee is the thing that happened with most of them, which is that the bacon probably didn't get cooked all the way. Ah, yes. Let's so let's talk about that. Like, if you are a crispy bacon person, this recipe will not work for you. Because in order to have the crispy bacon, you will have ruined the other components. Right. In my opinion. I should phrase right. it that way. <laughs> Most likely. Right. You, would, you would end up or Maybe not ruined. They'd just be overcooked. If not... Well, usually when something is overcooked, it's ruined. Yeah. I'd let, there's some people out there, though, and I know some of them. They don't get enough charcoal in their diet, so they don't have a problem with eating things that look like a briquette. And I'm like... Okay. Ew. Oh, but, that's, that's, but that's yeah. me. But like, it was, that was my biggest thing with this one. And also, I'm I'm also not a big fan of, uh, um, I'm not a fan of runny yolk, like just in general. Okay. I prefer a fried hard egg, um, are a. So bad for you. I know. <laughs> Blame history. Um, hey, some people don't like to eat ass. I feel bad for them, but <laughs> I move on with my life. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> wow. I feel like that should be a shirt. <laughs> but I don't think we could get away with wearing it very many places. Anyways. No, but um I mean the shirts we wear we're wearing right now, Gary, I don't think we wear wear many places. I don't know. I think I could wear this in public, like at the grocery store. People won't really truly understand it i mean they could read it but if you're close enough to read my shirt maybe that's on you i suppose maybe if you're baking you get all sticky from the sweet stuff and you've finished making cookies there we go anyways sure. that's what it's saying <laughs> um, but uh again I, I i i i like this video because it was a little bit more realistic in that mm-hmm. like it showed people like having difficulties because you have to again you need to have an air fryer and then you had to place the piece of egg down or egg down bread down and then you had to basically crack open the egg so that it laid in the center of the bread mm-hmm. and there were so many fails with that like it's, <laughs> it's true like you 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 kind of can control it in a sense but you can't control it fully because right. it is a kind of semi-liquid um viscous kind of thing but um and yeah it, it it's I mean, okay it, it, and that this was them the reason probably one of the reasons why they had a bunch of them is they were basically reviewing a tiktok recipe right or a tiktok hack uh right. they even said it hey we saw this from the air fryer guy on, on tiktok tiktok Here's how our, ours turned out, <laughs> and if it was good. So, apparently, there were very positive reviews. 
Yeah. I mean, I bet overall it's probably tasty. I would, again, I'd want more cooked bacon. That's the first one. I'd probably want a more cooked egg. So I would maybe do seven and a half, maybe eight minutes to see if that helped. Maybe. Again, this is me just Mm -hmm. thinking out loud. Um, uh, But I will admit it's bacon, egg, and bread in seven minutes. Um, that's not bad. Yeah, just slap on a slice of American cheese after it's done, and it'll just kind of melt over the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bacon, it's, egg, and cheese not, on bread. Yeah. It's not really a sandwich. It's not a, yeah, it's not really a sandwich. Like, I, I mean, you I, could I say it's an call it a sandwich. sandwich, but... Uh, semantics. <laughs> No, I mean, like, does it meet the definition of an open face sandwich? Yeah. Maybe. Like, <laughs> there's a part of me that's like, are are we like, do I expect a side of hollandaise like, or that sauce over top of this? No, I'd be a hack to the hack. That's some hollandaise. But yeah, it's um, it's something. And, 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 and so I do appreciate that this one had a whole bunch of responses. I do feel like the people that are in this video are probably paid reviewers. Right, there were probably yeah. BuzzFeed. The people from BuzzFeed. Well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Because there was a part of me that's like, some of this is believable as far as who these people are. But then they're like, I'll give it a 10 out of 10, a seven and a half out of 10. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, why are we suddenly putting this on a scale? So anyways, right. I, yeah, it's okay. It was something I would just say that much. Yes. Yeah. So that being said, uh, (laughs) this next thing is just a tweet. This made me laugh (laughs) because I think this is what some people's uh, thoughts are on the subject. Uh, It's a tweet that says from uh, Papa Tomato. It says video titled quote, fast food hack end quote. And then it's just 30 seconds of some white person dumping the most disgusting mixture of sauces on top of a chicken sandwich. (laughs) That's a bad fast food hack. (laughs) Well, right. I think that's part of their point. But I think they're just making commentary on the whole trend Mm -hmm. of these food, social media trend things. And then sometimes they're hacks. And they're like, baby, this is not a hack. Yeah. And like like it's gross. Yeah. And like like why are we making why? this content? Why? <laughs> I don't think I was paying enough attention to figure out why you guys got broken down. <laughs> it's in the wording of the tweet, but anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because there is more often than not a commonality in these things. Uh Uh-huh. Um oh shit. That came out really bad. Um I mean, I don't see the lie in that. No, there's no lie. Hmm. Right. And is it just again like there's a part of me that under like I, I I understand. Right. Like, I understand why you want to try to do these quick things to try to make things a little better, faster, easier, tastier, quote unquote. Um, but sometimes it comes down to just like. Why? Because what are the there's there's a video and it's been a while and I don't know if you it was one of the ones you share you were going to share, Gary, that you chose not to. But there was a video some years ago of. A woman making, I think, nachos or something on her countertop. Okay. Like, I, I, I cannot remember this. It was, it, I feel like it was nachos or tacos mm-hmm. or something. It was something, mm-hmm. it was just something. And they're literally just like pouring random, well, not random, but the ingredients on this table. And then, like, 
Yeah, I, and they did. They there was another one I saw that was like that, where it's this marble countertop basically, or on their table, and they just make a a pasta buffet, quote unquote, right. where right. they just cook tons of pasta, and then they spread it out on top of the table, presuming it's sanitized, because ew, and like, and then they just like pour crap on top of it, and by crap I mean like sauce and like meatballs and mm-hmm. cheese or whatever. Like they make this big thing, and then it's like, and that's how we eat. And I'm like, the fuck did I just watch? Right. <laughs> and I just, I mean, you could have at least put down some parchment paper or something. Oh no no no! That's that's too much. No like, no, it, yeah. it, that's what I'm saying. It's like, come on, man! What right. could you have right. like laid down some parchment paper? I could probably like, like, like yeah, crawfish uh, boiled. Isn't that they make like a big old thing and then you just kind of like toss it onto it? But right, you're but putting that it on is top actually... of yeah, and you're but, not but putting that's... it on the table. You put it on top of a you you lay out a parchment or something. Something that, yeah, it, right. But or that, but foil Jeff, or Jeff, yeah. absolutely, that is a legitimate thing. It's also part of a culture of cuisine. But that is all made in a big ass pot together, and then you dump it out. Like you strain it and you dump out, and like everything's together: the corn and the potatoes and the crab and like the crawfish and all that stuff. Right? This is legitimately separate components just being dumped on a table on top of each other. Yeah. It, it uh, my it my does... point was more of. More of a similar thing to this type of thing, a crawfish boil. You lay something down. I'm just complaining about the. I, I'm just agreeing with you. I'm just. No, saying, that's fair. That's fair. I'm, I'm, I'm in the. I'm in the saying. <laughs> come on, man. Could you have laid la- down some aluminum foil or, or parchment or even wax, wax paper or something? No, you know, because apparently that was that was too much. One, the it's a bridge too far. Be a bitch. Right. And then, mm, mm. <laughs> this gets me so heated. Like, there's this feeling, like, wh- like who who is cleaning this up? Like, who is who is the one that's cleaning this this shit up once they're done? Oh, you and know then, that they had to clean it up, or their crew, their camera crew, somebody did. And just like so, that part. And then, like, why? Who who is one to eat? This, like, all over a table, open air, like, nothing covered up, no, no, nothing, nothing, just, just out there with, with all exposed to, like, every fucking thing, like, like, and, and, oh, it just, it, it, it grows, it grosses me out, the idea behind it, because I remember, if I'm remembering the one correctly, like, someone put fucking gloves on and then, like, went in and was, like, Stirring shit up, and I'm like, they put gloves no. on. No, yeah, great. Um, I mean, right, if you're trying I... to do this like for a big old party where you're gonna have a bunch of people, then it's like I'm gonna make everybody nachos, and then, so you, in order, you might not have like a nice pan or or container or something to put it all together in that's gonna be big enough. So you lay it on the table. Obviously, you should probably put down some wax paper or something like that. That no. and 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 then just have have like something <laughs> to contain it. Maybe you get a big old cardboard box. Might be a little bit better idea than than line it. <laughs> Sorry, I made a face, Jeff. I just just it no. Um, but yeah, the the you can go to the dollar store. And buy a big like aluminum pan, a few of them, and get the same amount of food, if not more, um, yeah. in these things. I mean, and maybe this I, is a preparatory thing where where you just make the big old batch and then you you lump it into or, the pans. Or the video was created to get reaction. That's probably the thing. Like I just, it was I, intentionally I, done because I've seen several of them mm-hmm. being created or people reacting to things, and I'm like, this is purely to get a reaction. Nobody legitimately, I believe, sits down to a table for eight with like six pounds of pasta cooked, just dumped on the table with sauce and other things on it, or that big ass nacho bar, or whatever. I'm just like, oh, this is to get a reaction. 
like this is this is and, and it works because yeah. then people they they retweet it they comment on it they share it it becomes viral and i'm like that's nice yeah i found it yeah i found the video and oh dear I'm, yeah i don't need to watch it because i it'll i just get mad i'm just gonna get mad <laughs> in here <laughs> Uh, I also have to apologize for for some video issues because I really needed to take care of a little spam thing that was coming through my Skype. Anyways, moving on. Oh, everybody could hear everything, even the boink 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 boink. Oh, that shit. Ah, yeah. Oh, oh, I see. I see now. Okay, it just showed up in the um, yeah. screen, live stream. Anyway, mm. uh, so that being said, and David let's, getting let's back. Let's move on to. <laughs> If you missed the pre-show, if you want to listen to the pre-show, you're going to have to uh, become a patron at Cubs, uh, uh, patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Where we get Damon actually watching the video during our pre-show and uh, his reactions to it. So, I want to yeah. say is, I think you could have some improvements to this. <laughs> As David leaves. <laughs> so well, first of all, let's let's start with this. So the 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 it's a tweet response to a video, and it literally is called Don't Piss Me Off. And oh. it is a five-minute video that has over three million views. Now, this is something I want to just put out there because I think this is important. Uh, in terms of optics, the person who posted this and said, don't piss me off, their Twitter um, profile page is of an African-American woman um, who apparently is a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, from what I can gather. Uh, but <laughs> the reason why that's important to me is because this is one of those clickbaity kind of videos, I think, that was intentionally made to get reactions. Because why? It follows the formula. It is a middle-aged white woman in her kitchen teaching us a recipe that she makes for her family that apparently they really enjoy. And there's these little things that happen in it that are kind of like classic tropes I've seen out of these videos, including I do this because this is how I get my kids to eat. Fill in the blank, whatever that mm -hmm. X factor is usually about vegetables. Mm-hmm. It's about five minutes long. It's not an atrocity. Like it's not it's not oh. a disaster in terms of like what they're making. However, <laughs> there's other ways to do this. <laughs> and I think this is where Jeff was like, I had, I think there's some Jeff has notes. Jeff <laughs> there's some areas for improvement. <laughs> I have thoughts. I I have thoughts. Right. Go ahead with your thoughts, Jeff. <laughs> so, uh, one, uh, a no to the chicken nuggets. Let's let's work with. Right. This that would be is, great. This is... would be great. Well, well, this, partly because it's breaded, you know, um, that we we don't need the breading in this dish. Uh, but maybe like some like if you get like a rotisserie chicken in from uh, the store or something like that, and then chop it up. Okay, I see. I see where you're going with this pre-cooked chicken, easy peasy. Mm -hmm. If you're okay yeah. with like dealing Great with a carcass, <laughs> uh, short uh, a shortcut here. She's got the the sliced uh, uh, carrots. Uh, she mentions you can use the dice kind to even better uh, get a one like a bag of your favorite mix of vegetables, mm. like mixed veggies. Probably you could use that instead. Um, I would not use cheddar cheese soup. <laughs> One of several breaking points for David. Now, plus side here, plus side here is I can understand the thought of all this cheese because you know how I got learned how to like peas? Cheese whiz. But I'm not saying put cheese whiz in the dish. But if you're going to try to make a pot pie, you're going to want, like, more, like, gravy. Like, jarred gravy or something would work, I think. 
Yeah, the the amount of cheese is really kind of surprising. I probably and do yet... shredded tre- cheese. Probably ideally, like have block and shred it yourself. But you know, if you do pack and shredded cheese, it would be fine. You want to cheese it up a bit, right? So, yeah, like, oh. and I wouldn't make it in the in the pie pan. I would probably like mix everything together in in like a bowl. And then pour it into the pie, which is like most of the time when you're making some sort of pie, that's what you do. Yeah. And I I do like her hack for essentially how how to get across on a on a on a (laughs) frozen pie pan by using another another frozen pie. Because it kind of packs it too. I was just gonna say, I was yeah. just gonna say, because bitch, you can buy them things in packs of two. So what are you? I, gonna I'm do okay with it. I'm I'm okay with that hat. And she talks about like putting some egg wash on the on the top of the top one. I mean that works halfway out. through. Yeah. So, <sighs> ooh, I okay. <laughs> I agree with your choices. Chef, like your <laughs> your edits to the recipe, because it basically then becomes a cheesy chicken pot pie mm-hmm. without mm, um, cheddar cheese soup. Yeah, yeah. I I think the cheddar cheese soup is just going, and and we're well, missing because... out a thing without without using the uh, like turkey gravy or something. Yeah, um, because the, the, the oh god, and she didn't season anything unless she thinks well, the, the, she, the crust was. She did at one point, I think, put either garlic granules or onion. She did, she did Himal- oh, Himal- the Himalayan, Himalayan salt. salt. I'm like, oh, you're doing that- all this, <laughs> you're doing all was- this, and you're going to go all bougie with the Himalayan pink salt, like, and I'm like. She's- Fucking Dude, said, do you know how much that stuff salt. costs? When you could and just I, use some kosher salt or even just some freaking table salt, for God's sake. And I, I get fucking boxes die. of kosher salt that are big. but when you buy but when you buy great value chicken nuggets, peas, and carrots, you can afford Himalayan pink, pink salt. salt. I think that's the part we're missing out on. <laughs> I make this, I I almost, because of the way, like her accent and everything, I really think this is a, this is a parody video, although it has some sort of authenticity to it, to the fact that, hey, this is an authentic dish. Is this great? No, probably not. But there's improvements that can be made. I just, there's a, there's a part of me that she said, again, she said like the cheddar cheese soup was meant to be kind of like the the not really the binder, but it was supposed to be like the when you open up a chicken pot pie, kind of that like filling, that kind of creaminess feeling. And I was like, you do realize that when cheddar cheese soup gets hot, it melts because then it wouldn't be soup. Like when you when yes I get it when you put when you when she put it on there originally and it was that thick consistency, okay that's what we're going for with regards to cheddar cheese soup. That part too, but (laughs) but when we did decide it like that was I I saw where where her mind was going with this concoction regarding this like cheddar cheese soup being like this like bindery kind of like gravy kind of filling kind of thing for the thing. But I knew immediately it was not going to do what she thinks it was going to do uh, because of several factors. One, the cheese is the condensed soup with no, nothing in it. So it's going to just like blah. It's just going to melt out. And on top of that, she didn't just threw a bunch of like cheese slices on there. I then, noticed the, I noticed the cheese slices. Sorry, David, to interrupt. I noticed the cheese slices because I was like, oh, because the cheese slices will make the lid stick and stay in place to try to contain the maybe <laughs> the inside. If you say so, if you say so, Gary. Um, no. <laughs> um, but I agree with, with like if there had been something thicker that remained thicker when it was in there. 
And I hate to say this, and this is me saying it, but we, we mentioned it in the very beginning of this episode. Cream of mushroom soup. Cream of mushroom soup. Like, she went through all this trouble. Like, I guess this was the whole idea to, like, make it easier for her kids to eat because they would eat it. But, like, if it had been cream of mushroom soup, I might have been okay with it. Even with the cheese on top. With the chicken nuggets? No, fuck the chicken nuggets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Is your main complaint the fact that it's cheddar cheese? It's also condensed cheddar cheese soup, which is basically the same consistency as cream mushroom Maybe. soup, condensed cream of mushroom soup. Maybe. I just don't think, I just, I just didn't, it, no, it, it doesn't work for me. The idea doesn't work for me. The, the idea behind the whole thing was, but I did like the idea of the, Two crust to kind of make the pot pie moment. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a smart decision because it does become, you know, it's. But you know, at the end of the day, the crust didn't come, doesn't come together. You know, you don't do anything at the sides, so it's yeah. just. You know, I would use. I would definitely use more of like frozen vegetables versus canned. Because mm. those are probably fresher, in essence, and, because they were flash frozen. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, mm. Ro- like a rotisserie chicken binding, I, I think if you had, like you said, combined everything together as opposed to having mm-hmm. this like layered, mm-hmm. not even layered, yeah, it was technically layered bullshit together. Um, there were so many fucking peas in this thing, by the way. Like, I don't want to, like... I, I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. Like, ugh, no. Just, it, it's a lot of pea. And... You're not a fan of peas? That, I'm okay with peas in moderation. So, I, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that post-show. Of why peas are an issue. Um, um, peas are great. Yeah. Um... With that, I think if they had all been mixed together and put in there, and then you put the lid on the other pie crust on top, you would have gotten the same sort of thing. Now, no, no chicken nuggets. No. Like, when when I saw the chicken nuggets, I was done. Like, there is nothing else that is going to be redeemable in this moment because of the chicken nuggets. Because it is basically frozen processed chicken Think stuff. Slot. Yeah. It is not it is it is no. Um and I also uh, everything so again the good thing is pretty much everything is cooked already. So the dough's not raw dough. It is it's just you just heat it to bake it, bake it to warm it up, what have you. Um the um the the peas and carrots are done. The chicken nuggets are definitely done. The cheese soup mixture is done. The cheddar cheese on top is done. I yeah, I had a big issue with the all the peas, the Himalayan sea salt, the chicken nuggets, and the cheddar cheese soup. Because you put all that together and it's crap. Now, I, I, my main reaction was was to the Himalayan pea salt. I'm like, after all of this, you're going to be all bougie and use Himalayan peas and pink salt. Come yeah, on. like, come on, like, so garlic, yeah. pepper, <laughs> fucking pepper, like something. Here's here's here's. I have two specific thoughts about this. The first one is, I feel like. If there's any legitimacy to this, it was an attempt to inform parents how they could get their kids to eat something that is approachable, that is different than what kids, quote unquote, conventionally eat. And the reason why I say that is there are classic foods that kids will eat. Chicken nuggets or chicken tenders, french fries, mac and cheese. Those are like the main things that are now considered staples of children's American diet, which is infuriating me. Um, Years ago, when I had thought about the concept of opening a restaurant, 
I like intentionally um, nearly got canceled because I basically told people I would have no such thing as a children's menu. And they thought I was crazy. And I was like, no, kids can eat adult food. It's not a big deal. End of story. And like some people agree with me and other people are like, you know, I actually had people tell me that's impossible. My children would not eat what, you know, what parent, what adults eat. And I'm like, actually, they can't. You just have to. That's what that's what's available. It's the end of the story. You don't cater to their like pissosity or their temper tantrum or their whatever, because that's the only thing that they want. Something. Right, right. Like, you know, yeah. a smaller portion is one thing, but to make a special set menu of personal pan pizzas and French fries or that kind of crap is annoying. So that being said, I feel like this was intentionally made as a way to potentially have children approach a different kind of dish. That might be something. I'm not really sure about that because of like, okay, so we've got chicken nuggets and cheese, a classic combo. Um, you know, and the fact that we're putting it in a pie crust and we're putting all this other stuff with it, like the vegetables to try to get the kids to eat the vegetables. But my thought is if your kids don't like vegetables, guess what, bitch? They're not going to eat them even in the cheese sauce. They'll just eat around them because that's what I did. Like I was a kid. It's like if I didn't like the thing, I wouldn't eat the thing. That was the end of the story. Like right. I, I just like so. Man, I grew up with an entirely thought. different point of view. I wasn't picky, that picky of being an eater. Oh, so. Oh God! Ooh, so I probably could have been, mm -hmm. but then I didn't eat. That was my household, Damon. You right. ate what was in front of you, and mm -hmm. there is a handful of times that I have not very good memories. Um, and I don't mean like I don't remember very well. I mean they were not enjoyable like experiences. Mm -hmm. They were not good memories. Yeah, right. I was not allowed to leave the kitchen table. Until you finish your food. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Cauliflower yeah. and broccoli, notoriously, I despised as a child. And I remember distinctly sitting at the kitchen table for hours, not being able to get up to leave, mm -hmm. to, to do anything, to watch television, to go whatever. I had mm -hmm. to sit alone in the kitchen while my parents were in the living room because I would not eat my vegetables. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there was no way to get out of it. Yeah. I had to eat the vegetables. That was the end of the story. Yeah. And vegetables are worse typically when they get cold. So the experience just gets more miserable as time goes right. by. Yeah. Yeah. So I like I think I was kind of a mix of you both. Like I usually was not pick a picky eater, at least to my knowledge. I could be wrong. There were there are certain things to this day I won't won't eat, and I remember my dad forcing me to eat um, that I just ended up not you know I just it was it was it was right. it was the they would sit there or I would just be done like it would get taken away from me and I wouldn't have dinner basically, right. um, but I was I ate a lot of diff I ate mostly everything. It was just a few things here and there that for some reason um, would be forced upon me and I would have to eat. Now, one of those things in particular that's coming to mind is Brussels sprouts. I hated Brussels sprouts as a kid, but the only reason I hated Brussels sprouts as a kid was because they were boiled. Mm. You know, I don't think I've ever, I, I was ever served Brussels sprouts. So you yeah. were. So I currently Brussels. don't have an actual authentic opinion in Brussels sprouts. So you were a lucky kid. Because, <laughs> but I I was the only one of of the. It was me and my mom were the only two of my family that liked to cook carrots. Mm. I also discovered as I got a little older and, and became a teenager that my mother was not a good cook. My father, my father was a decent cook in the home. My mother was not. My mother would ruin pasta. Oh, God. And to this day, as an adult, I have not been able to figure out exactly how she did it. But there is a part of me that's like, well, I'm asking about stuff that's 30 to 40 years ago. And perhaps the food has changed in the way it's made that it's not quite possible to cook so, pasta the same way to basically turn it into glue. Because that's what my mother did. Notoriously, 
time after time after time. Nine, ten that. minutes for spaghetti, at least. Most, so, most pastas are about yeah. that. So this, yeah. Dry. Yeah. So this, this, go ahead, Gary, Gary, Gary with your, your, your feelings on this. Moment. No, so, and then, so here's my second thought. And here's, here's the, the more cerebral, possibly nerve touching issue. I am sort of offended by this video. <laughs> and it's not because of what's in the video. It's because of what it is making as a statement about the, the world that some of our neighbors in this country live in. And here's why. Poor people don't have access because of the cost of things to better quality ingredients. Mm. I grew up in a house that we were lower middle income, but we did not get to buy all the things that I would have liked us to buy. We didn't always buy name brand. There was at least a decade of my life. We bought generic and generic back in the day. Kids was white with big black letters on it. And that's what you bought. And now it's kind of comical about how, like, you know, people go to, like, Aldi here in the U.S. and they buy stuff that is a name brand because it's made by the same manufacturers and it's cheaper and blah, blah, blah. And that was kind of what was happening with generic. But notably, the food quality just wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. So all of that is to say I'm kind of offended by this video because I feel like why do I need this white woman commentating through her recipe, quote unquote, how to make something that supposedly her kids are going to eat. And I'm like, but I'm looking around your house and I was like, that's a nice kitchen. That's a nice fridge. That's a nice like countertop. It's a shitty plate. That's the one thing that frustrated me because I was like, what the fuck did you do to that plate woman? <laughs> it's so scratched up. But I was thinking about the context of like, if you don't have, Sounds. if you don't have that much, like availability in terms of income for good quality ingredients, you will experiment. You will mix things together to make stuff. Mm -hmm. There is, there is a dish. <laughs> maybe I'll talk about it in post show um, that my mother and I, my, we kind of invented question mark um, in, in a roundabout way. What amuses me now more than anything is that, that one of the major uh, fast food chains in the world makes a dish that kind of is similar. Anyways, like you just, you did things, but I also come from a family that experimented and like would put stuff together and classically like my grandmother was infamous on my dad's side, his mother. Um, she would just, what do I have in the pantry? What do I have in the fridge? Mm -hmm. Like, let me just make stuff. So she infamously made um, <laughs> spaghetti casserole. Because she didn't have lasagna noodles to make lasagna. So mm -hmm. she would just put spaghetti noodles that were par cooked in with a bunch of shit and throw it in the oven and, like, you know, and serve so it up. spaghetti. Right, right, right. But that's just it. It's like, like there's all these different things. But the, the thing that I think about this video more that irritates me is I'm like, this is like this weird co-opting of uh -huh. what other people have had to do because they had no other choice. Choice, right. Like I'm looking at this, so I'm, I'm at the end, near the end, where she's pulling it out of the pan, the pan, the pan, ooh, the pan, um, and I just there's there's a there's a thought process like, wow, this definitely does not work. Like it's not, there's no consistency to it. Um, since we made it the way we made it, it's falling apart. Um, so it's not really getting what I think you want it to get with it. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking around it. Like you said, that's a really nice countertop. Now, could that be a, you know, quick flip countertop? Maybe. But then I noticed her nails. I was just going to say that manicure. Mm hmm. Um, I'm trying to get to her face. I think that's near the end. Yeah. Um, nope. Hold on. Too far. Too far. Um, 
Oh, come on. Sorry. Perfect, perfectly quaffed eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Like, and yeah. I realize that we're that we're really breaking this down and getting kind of super picky about it. But yeah. when you think about the context of how this was made, there's a part of me that's like, is this meant to be like, is this meant to be a spoof? Like, are mm-hmm. you trying to like criticize people who yeah. do actually make dishes like this? Yeah. Yeah. Like it just doesn't work in the way that it should. Um, yeah. It just, there's a part of me that bother it. It, it, it does bother me. And you make a good point, Gary, um, because when I think about it, this is something someone probably would have done if they like went in their fridge or freezer and were like, this is what we've got, but I've got to feed maybe four or five people. So this is what I would try to come up with to like make this happen. Um, Cause she, you like, if you think about it, she technically only used two two different two cans of vegetables, mm-hmm. um, and not even the whole can of yeah. each. Right. Mm-hmm. Two cans of vegetables, um, two pie crusts, which you can get like you can get those anywhere. They're pre made, right. quick and easy. You can probably get like a general, you know, generic version if necessary. Um, she the only kind of name brand thing she technically used was Campbell soup, and we don't know where the cheese came from, you know. Um, like it, it's interesting because I'm thinking about this and I'm like, the chicken nuggets are the only thing that I might not expect to get from a food pantry. Right. Like if it, like if my family needs assistance and mm-hmm. I'm using Snap or food food bucks or whatever you know it was called. Yeah. You know, in in your area, and like you know, protein is a high commodity. It's a high price item. Even chicken nuggets are kind of that way because it's processed. You know, mm-hmm. all that yeah. jazz. But it's like I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, you could have easily been given some of these things. Canned yeah. canned goods are a classic thing that you know right. you get distributed. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't. I'm not saying that this was her intention. I'm not saying she's a bad person, and that you know all that kind of crap. It's just one of these things that stuck out to me, kind of as a weird thing. Like the like, and the implements that she uses, like that huge, like psycho, like kitchen chef knife. I'm like, why, why, why on earth are you trying to cut this thing with this like 10 inch or 12 inch like yeah. crazy fucking knife? Like it, it's totally overkill is unnecessary. It and then you're be. trying to use like a flat spatula for flipping meat in a pan as the spatula to remove it from the pan. I'm like, but then I'm looking around her kitchen and I'm like, bitch, you don't have a pampered chef like pie server? Seriously? <laughs> But again, it's it's becoming it became it. Oh, I I I again, like I said, I do hate this, and I um, <laughs> I am pissed off at this moment at this this recipe. I just don't think it's it's what I wanted. But as you draw back the lens a little bit and you think more about it, you're kind of like, I bet this was another parody one. Mm. I bet this was meant to be like, yeah, we're gonna make this. It sounds more genuine than fake. I'll put it like that. Like, well, so it because could be, yeah, because I don't ever think the curve, like the weird thing, came in. Right. Like usually in a in a parody or in a in an intentionally viral video, there's a weird element, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you're like, the fuck, like, right. bitch, why are you putting a boiled egg in there? Or you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. just something that kind of seems out of character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sometimes pretty extreme, sometimes mm-hmm. not. And there really wasn't anything. Like, I think all three of us are like, is this plausible? Yes. Would we make it? No. Probably not. Right. Like, I, or, I, if we or, or it, something we would, really would use it for inspiration. Way. I wouldn't make it this way. I would honestly, right. if I were to make it, granted, probably I don't cook. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, let's get that, let's get that reality out there. I'm not the cook. Wait, 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 wait. Let, let me, let me demonstrate, David, let me demonstrate David making this, Okay. <laughs> He'd order it on an app to be delivered to his home. Hello, Cheddars. Can I order some chicken pot pie? Thank you very much. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> 
That is not shame. That is fact. That is that is fact. <laughs> that is fact. Reality would be I probably. All right, hey, how, I, I, so it, it just how about this? Let's rephrase it. How would Jim actually make this? That's a good question. So Jim actually has probably made something similar to this before. He, we've okay. actually had like a pot pie kind of thing before, but he would have done like what Jeff was mentioning, like rotisserie chicken, um, probably frozen, like a peas and carrots, frozen, you know, peas and carrots kind of moment. Um, some seasoning, just some fucking seasoning. Um, <laughs> chives, and regular I seasoning. Chives, chives are not a season. Seasoning. They're, 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 anyway, um, they're a garnish. I mean, some um, some herbs in there would probably work. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, but like some like there would be something else in there. It probably wouldn't be the cheddar cheese soup. It would probably be like cream of mushroom or cream of um, um, chicken. Yeah, cream of chicken. Probably be one of those. Do, do um, you know what cheddar like, cheese soup is? I'm sure it's the same thing. It's it's cream of cheddar cheese essentially. Yeah, it's just <laughs> yeah. it seems weird to say cream when you're dealing with cheese. That's all. Right, right. Um, but the uh, cheddar cheese soup really wasn't a problem for me. But it it would be like you said, it would probably be mixed up, maybe warmed up in a sense, like on a stove top, and then poured into a probably already like pre baked a little bit um, pie tin, pie mm. pie tin, the pie crust, uh, pie crust. Yeah, pie crust. Gosh, where's the hard? Yeah, hey, you should always par bake uh, par bake your your pie right. crust, anyways. Mm -hmm. And then poured the consistency in, and maybe done. Um, a pie like a instead of another pie thing on top, maybe actually done like the pie, um, the pre rolled pie crust that are just like flat yeah, and they kind put of it done on that on top, yep. yeah, and then you know, um, fork through right. it to kind of get the okay. air. And then I, I do think the egg wash. I don't know if he would have done the egg wash, but he might have done the egg wash. But you could also take the second pie out of the pie tin on a counter, put some flour down Possibly. probably, and yeah. just roll it a little bit or even press it yeah. with your fingers. And like you could and you could take a pizza cutter and like run through and make strips and fuck yeah. around yeah, and, and make a lattice. Right. Like yeah. you could you could do things to kind of zhuzh it up, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And th and that's where I think it would have gone. There definitely, there definitely would have been seasoning, like just <laughs> like, like real seasoning. Like number one, yeah, we're not using like Himalayan sea salt for for this. I, kind of I thing. still would have used used a gravy instead of like an easy soup or something like that for this. I could see using a like maybe a gravy or or um if you wanted to go the cheese route. Like maybe like a a um uh like a creamier cheese like a ricotta or something along those lines maybe again I'm I'm just I probably wouldn't have gotten that much not ricotta yeah at least. but there's a there's a part of me that's yeah. thinking that but maybe not anyway no 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 that would not work because that would be too runny anyway so those are the thoughts that come to my mind right I mean I, I think there's there's definitely room for a lot of options. <laughs> Right to consider to if, make it if, different. If, if this is like bottom floor bullshit crap, <laughs> like you can you can very quickly add things. I mean, like the easiest thing to do, if you changed one thing at all to me in this whole fucking thing, it would have been to swap out chicken nuggets with even the frozen grilled like chicken like strips. Even I'm ready. that would have been. Non unbreaded, unbreaded grilled chicken strips would have been five times better than the chicken nuggets. But again, we're possibly we're potentially dealing with if this was like, you know, they didn't have you know it's front money kind of thing. That's the thing. So, oh, anyway. And is there a potential? I just want to say this for the record: is there a potential that they can't afford? their lifestyle mm. and therefore they have to like make choices in other areas absolutely because i've known a fair amount of people who mm -hmm. like you know have an expensive vehicle have an expensive house like live in a good neighborhood like they do all these things and it's like 
maybe they eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on the regular because mm-hmm. they got bills to pay, mm-hmm. and so they make <laughs> they make cuts in other areas. I mean, um, and I'm not saying this about her, but I'm like, yeah. there is a potential yeah. that there is some reality to the to the incongruence of like the food that is being made versus the environment that it's in. Yeah, like the first year living in the south because just financially it was like oh wow this is this is what living and buying a house is mm-hmm. um yeah there were there were cuts made there were a lot of cuts made um from the get-go especially in the first you know year or so of being in the house because i don't think either of us were truly like knew financially what this could all entail um i'm not saying don't buy a house but like right. You do have to think about it when you are the owner as opposed to renting. Um, Everything that happens in the house, you have to deal with. Right. That's a new matter altogether. (laughs) Because when you rent, (laughs) it's the landlord that has to deal with all that. Mm -hmm. But you are the whole landlord. (laughs) Yeah, you are. Jeff, you are right. That is a whole other. That's another show. (laughs) all the potatoes so here's here's as we i think we're ready to wrap up at least i feel that that's the direction we're going here's my thing on it is i think there's a lot of stuff that gets posted regarding food online because it's a it's a thing that we all share we all need sustenance to be alive that being said Anytime this stuff comes up, I'm usually very shy about clicking and or watching or giving it any validity because I do think there is quite the trend to get people to either react or to um, to just watch. Like eyeball- eyeballs, advertising, blah, 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 blah. And so I don't know how much of it really benefits us in our lives and to be fair look at what happened here we are on a podcast talking about this video (laughs) the links in our show notes on our website yeah so i i think that i think that is a current trend of things and 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 it's interesting because i remember i remember being much younger and the food networks becoming a thing and being like what like a channel just dedicated to cooking i thought that was amazing like because i was like that that's so cool in a way that like people can learn about food and about cooking now granted we're almost like 30 40 years later 30 years um and the world is a very different place and it's questionable how much teaching how to cook is really on that channel um, says the person who doesn't have cable and never watches it. Uh, <laughs> so, but I feel like it's, it's very much moved in a couple of directions about creating celebrities, about having game shows, about a bunch of different stuff. So I, I feel like it, it's a much different place than back in the day where pre food network, you had like the galloping gourmet, you had Julia child, like you had these very specific people who like made a career out of presenting to the world basically how to make food and the world is a different place now i think this is the current version of it i just don't know how much it really Mm -hmm. teaches us yeah like the more i think of some of these videos and like you said there's hundreds upon hundreds more um i think in a lot of ways these are um clickbait Mm. they're meant to entice you and then you look at them they're, yeah, they're this not isn't, this is, Yeah, they're 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 entertainment for your entertainment purposes only to kind of put that out there. Um, have I seen things sometimes where I'm like, oh, that makes sense. There's been a couple. There's the one with the whole like flipping meat and you literally take the like the pan and you turn it over and you put the meat like you you do that whole thing when you turn the meat over in a pan without actually having to flip it you actually flip the pan as opposed to flipping the meat i can't remember anyway that's the thing and i was like oh that's really that's a really cool because it makes fucking sense 
Um, it wasn't. A yeah, there's meat, a, there are some enough. good stuff here. The ones we yeah, just showed some. aren't necessarily good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they were um, on TikTok where most of these are. Yeah. Or YouTube. Well, I think, I mean, I think there were some takeaways from this. Mm hmm. Like, I think there are some hints or some tips, maybe like some things that you didn't think of there. I was like, oh, OK, that's a thing. That's a thought. Will I do it? <laughs> There's a, there was a lot here maybe. that was interesting to watch. But that's about it. Well, that begs the question, was it made just to be entertainment? Maybe. I think like I think I, the Food Network posting would would be would kind of fly in the face of that because I think it legitimately was made to show us a way to make a dish. Fair, but that's what the Food Network is. Then somehow. they labeled the right. Then they labeled the recipe that they linked to uh, completely wrong. <laughs> it's a freaking egg sandwich. Right, six. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. I think that's the end. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. Play ways to contact us. Let us know any food hacks that you've spotted and give us a link and maybe we'll talk about them again. Uh, maybe we will do a full-fledged React video. How about that? That would be interesting. Mm. <laughs> uh, you can send those to us in plethora of ways, including uh, leaving a comment on our blog where you find links to all these uh, tweets that we found over at CubsOutLoud.com. You can shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 well Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, if you would like to, you can join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, if you're having trouble with that link, try going to our website, going to the About Us, and then click on the uh, Telegram link. That'll give you the invite to the group we can also find uh us and find out when we're planning on recording these shows by subscribing to our google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col you can get very get various cubs out loud accoutrement over in zazzle zazzle.com slash cubs out loud which includes things such as now now that we're you're sticky here's our cookie shirts like gary and i are wearing or consent is my foreplay mugs a whole bunch of stuff uh, some of the t-shirt designs were designed by Smashy, which you can find more of his work at at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron of Cubs Out Loud at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or if you just want to send us a donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on basically any um, podcasting uh, podcast directory. Uh, please leave a comment, comment or review. Uh, and uh, rate us because that boosts up in the algorithm so more people can find us. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box up, box puppy, box cup, box something or other. And Windgem, W Y N D G E M on Twitch, where I stream bears and dragons. Damon? Uh, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as theatercub79, that's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as gibber73. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.